you briefly explain how is BBL procedure performed? BBL procedure is um, something to, to for the women, of course, we are talking about women, although you can do it with the uh, male patient as well. But what you do generally on two particular areas that are critical for the licking of the bone. One is the projection, that means posterior, you know, um, projection of the bone. And the other one is the uh, posterior lateral hollow area, that means exactly here. And actually, that, that makes a bone male or female. In order to male, assuming the projection, projection is okay or within the normal uh, range, this hollow area, because there's not enough fat there, so the muscles will be sort of visible, that would be a sort of good looking bone for the male. But in, in, in women, that would be looking weird. Because you're expecting, uh, you know, in a woman, a round shaped, but both posteriorly, I mean the backwards, and on the lateral side, I mean sideways, it should be round all around. Yeah. So um, even with the prosthesis, it's not so easy to give the fullness in these critical particular areas. So with the fat injection, actually at every step, at every move you do, you would be controlling where the fat should be going. And in the long term, because these fat cells has got some sort of memory in terms of storing the fats if the body get you know uh, more fat than you know they need uh, of the body and these fat cells would be sort of active in receiving and storing the uh, extra fat that you know the body will be uh, having. Okay. Uh, from which parts of the body uh, the fat is removed? Well, again, depending on the patient, but uh, generally what we do is actually working on the, uh, the waist because uh, these, the, the bone can't be thought about, you know, without thinking about the, uh, the, the waist. Mm -hmm. This is something like, you know, talking about nose without talking about chin or the forehead. Mm -hmm. So if your mid face is too low, your nose will be looking too big. If you have a full, you know, mid face, then you, your nose will be looking small. That exactly applies to the uh, bum and the waist. If you have a slim, you know, nice um, the, the waist, even if your bum is not big enough, it will be looking good. So when you're taking the um, uh, fat out for the uh, uh, transfer to the uh, bum, so the, the, the first choice always should be the, the fat around the waist. Uh, what is the maximum amount of fat to be injected in buttocks? Well, again, that's something to do with the uh, uh, graft taking. I mean, the more fat you know you would be injecting, it doesn't necessarily mean that you know the those fat all be taken. So the, the graft taking is a different issue, but it's something to do with the uh, um, giving the fat in with every injection should be a different location and you should have a chance to make contact with the vascular structures. And that means, um, because the, the, the muscle is not the area that you could be sort of giving the fat, the only available area that you could be working between the skin and on top of, on top of the muscles. So um, I would say for every uh, the bone, the amount should be around between 200 or, I don't know, 500. But I don't think, you know, more than 500 cc would have a chance to survive there, even if you give, you know, more fat cells there. Okay. Um, who is a good candidate for a BBL? For the ideal BBL patient would be having uh, as much fat as possible in the waist area, so that you could both be able to take the high quality fat graft, and at the same time, you would be able to make the uh, waist as slim as possible. As for the uh, bum, it's always uh, easier uh, to fill up the hollow areas uh, rather than uh, giving the posterior uh, backward projection. So, uh, of course, the ideal patient is always the one that having, you know, slight problems. Just, you know, the uh, correction, the contour, and giving the roundness would be easier. But for every patient, it is possible, as I said, to get fed around the waist 
and to, to put it on the, on the bone. But if the skeletal um, structure in the uh, hip is, you know, narrow, you, you can't, you know, fill it up so that the hip would be looking white. What is the maximum amount of fat to be injected? Well, maximum is something, you know, you could even try to put one liter, I mean one kilos on both sides, but it would doesn't mean that it would, you know, necessarily it will take. So the, I think that the, um, the maximum optimal amount would be around 500, depending on, again, how much area would be using to implant the grafts. If the area is wide enough, if the thickness is, you know, um, thick enough, and then you would be able to have, you know, so many surface and layers to implant. You know, like seeding, you know, it's just putting the grass everywhere. Mm -hmm. So if the bone is small, and if the, uh, the thickness uh, between the muscle and the skin is too, you know, thin, in that case, you would not be able to, you know, create different layers for the uh, graft to take. How long the uh, results will last? Well, uh, biologically, three days is the uh, critical period. For every single fat graft, has got three days to decide to survive or not. If the grafts would not be able to take within three days, that means they're dead. Any uh, fat graft that could manage to survive would be staying there forever. I mean after three days, after making contact with the vasculature structures, I mean, after the point that it could get oxygen and it could rid, uh, get rid of the uh, carbon dioxide by arteries and the veins, and then from that time on, you know, it would no, be, no different from any other fat cells naturally stay there, being there.